Uh, let me tell you about the man who first opened my eyes. Just like uh, many of you, thank you, Jeff Nelson, many of you, I had the opportunity to open your eyes so that you could see such an obvious thing that what you eat causes health or disease. Let me tell you how this happened to me. Mary and I met in... Uh, Well, it was either August or September of 1971. We met in an operating room. She had a mask on. All I saw was her eyes. <laughs> but I fell in love. It took me three weeks to get a date. Yeah. But once I took her out, she never left. Yeah. Well, anyway, we got together. It was about uh, August or September of 1971. And towards the end of uh, 1971, maybe December or so, I was a senior medical student. I was going to all these lectures at noon where the, the real doctors would talk about diseases, chronic diseases, and they'd talk about the signs and symptoms of diseases and how there's probably a gene related to them and, you know, we could give this drug to help the signs or symptoms. But I, I felt helpless as a medical doctor because they never taught me about how to prevent chronic disease like arthritis or uh, cancer or heart disease, and they certainly never taught me how to treat it. And then at this one noontime conference, uh, a period of presenter, I had no idea who he was, but he changed my life. His name was Dr. Dennis Burkett. He was a surgeon. He was trained in Edinburgh, Scotland. And after his training as a surgeon, he left with Walker, Alex Walker and Clive and a few of his other buddies, and they went to Uganda, Africa to help people in Uganda, Africa. And he stayed there for 17 years, he became the head of ministries of health of Uganda. Dr. Burkert oversaw a thousand hospitals and took care of indirectly and directly 10 million people over 17 years. And Dr. Burkert came to that noon time conference and he stood up there in front of the audience and I was sitting there and he was only talking to me. He stood up there and he said, in my 17 years, in Uganda, as the head of Ministries of Health, 1,000 hospitals, 10 million people, he said, I never saw a case of hemorrhoids. I never saw diverticulosis, diverticulitis. I never saw obesity. I saw one case of gallstones. I never saw colon cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, multiple sclerosis. I saw one heart attack, and that was in a judge who trained in London and came back to Uganda and had a heart attack. He told me that. I was so excited, and he told me it was because of fiber. It was because of the fiber they That was who he's focused on, but you all know the fiber only occurs in plants. So what he was talking about is the, the, the diet of the people of Uganda, which was a starch-based diet with fruits and vegetables, no dairy, and extremely little meat. That was back in the 50s and 60s. And I came home after that lecture, and I'm sure Mary remembers it. And I said, Mary, I heard this man talk about fiber, and I just want you to know, we're no longer eating white bread. We're going to have brown bread with our bacon and eggs. <laughs> yeah. But it opened my eyes. My eyes were opened. I, I, you know, I, I could see, finally, that there was a cause of disease. Took my plantation years and then my going back to become an internal medicine specialist before I really got it. And studying after that, you know, after I discovered the importance of diet and diseases, I told you a couple of minutes ago, I wanted to know everything. But let me just give you a minute. The only interview ever done of Dr. Dennis Burkett I did. It's in my January 2013 newsletter. It's an hour-long interview. He has a Scottish brogue. He's a little hard to understand. But if we can get the chance to hear them, let's try. If you look at the, the diet of disease of the countries throughout the world who don't get the common diseases of Western culture, and when I say the common diseases, I mean diseases like atherosclerosis, diabetes, gallstones, bowel cancer, breast cancer, hemorrhoids, varicose veins, navicular disease, huge palestine. The countries who don't get these diseases have a diet with far more starch, far more fiber, far less fat, far less sugar, far less salt. And the two major things we need is to eat more fiber and less fat. Okay, did you hear him use the word starch? 
Yeah. We used to call the food that I recommend starch. Potatoes, rice, corn. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I believe 70 to 90 percent of your diet should be starch. You heard Andrew Taylor, the potato guy. Yeah, hopefully you've gotten that theme, is what most of your food needs to be is starch. And Dr. Dennis Burkett told you about the common diseases. He didn't see colon cancer, heart disease. He told you. Yeah. I, I remember his presentation. And the only, the only slide I could really remember, and I tried to reproduce it, was this one. <laughs> During that noontime conference in 1971. That's a slide where he showed in two frames. In one frame, he showed tiny rock-hard bowel movements and big hospitals in contrast to countries and populations that have little hospitals, they have big bowel movements. Do you understand the connection? Yes. 